to share what we're doing. All right, so we're live. Look at that. Wow. Woo, hello. Hey, guys, Hi. happy Thursday. It's Thursday, August 30th, Facebook family. Uh, I am with the, I should come up with a different word, but we're going to say charismatic anyway. Charismatic, Melissa Fox is my guest today. So give us a thumbs up. Let us know you can hear us or see us. I say that every time because I did an entire interview once where you couldn't hear me. And so the guests had to come oh. back. And nobody told me. There were tons of people on watching. <laughs> they were all like... And they're like, oh, we like to read lips, Ted. Well, okay. that's not so good. So just let us know you can hear us or see us. And then sometimes it says live yeah. and you can't see it. So <sighs> Yes, tag me in this. I'll tag you. Oh. Hit it. There you, go. <sighs> you know how to do it. Yes, now maybe... It'll... All right, so give us a thumbs up. Go. You can hear us or see us. Um, I'm liking the lighting at the top here. It's I mean, good. I, yeah, I, don't, I only have 10 wrinkles. Hey, guys, what's I'm up? Like Give us, you have no wrinkles on that. Stop. Ash Sharma, thanks for the thumbs up. All right, so she's trying to go live too. She's trying to share. I got um, it, I got it. We got to give a shout out to our friend Boris who introduced us. Hi, Boris. Boris, we love you. So when you see the show later, if you pop on, um, if I, he, he introduces me to the coolest people. So welcome. Welcome. Oh, hi, me? Oh, yeah, you. You. Oh. You, you, hi. you. You're being welcome. <laughs> uh, what's great about Melissa is I don't have to educate her on how this all this crazy Facebook Live thing works because she's done it, she does it, and she's a guru in radio and so many other things. So we're going to get her backstory now, though. So oh. we'll start with, oh. <laughs> we're going to start with Nantucket, I guess. Um, okay. And we're not going to make a rhyme about that. We're going to talk about um, your background. So welcome. My brother is the man from Nantucket. <laughs> just wanted to you say You do that rhyme, yeah, don't we all? I do. <laughs> um, hi, Ben. Just wanted to say hi. Anyway, uh, yeah, I was born and raised on Nantucket Island in Massachusetts, and I left when I was 16 and never turned back. <laughs> 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 well, never. I, there are many reasons, Ted. Have you never been back to Nantucket? Yes, I went back uh, a few times. I haven't been back since uh, right before 9 uh, 11. Oh. I literally went to Logan Airport just a couple of months prior to the whole thing. Wow. Yeah. So, no, I haven't been back since then. Always been here? Did you move here? No, I did not. All uh, right. So, give us a little background because obviously you weren't born and then you were... And then, boom. Then, boom, you're on radio. No, uh, close enough. I was born <laughs> and then, boom, I was in cable TV. Oh, you were on cable TV. Yes. All I, right. So, how did you get into cable TV? I had a crush on this guy, Jonathan Burkhart, and he worked at the local cable station, and I was like a sophomore in high school, I think. And next thing you know, I worked there, and I was making like 20 bucks a week uh, doing camera and editing. And oh, so you learned all the back stuff, but it was by act, it was because you liked the boy. Yeah. yeah. You like some. A lot of times that happens. It changes. So when you got in there and originally the plan was, I like this boy, I want to be close to him. Mm -hmm. And then did you realize at that moment as you started working, this is something I'd like to do that I actually am interested in? Well, Ted, I'm glad you asked. Okay. <laughs> I'm still asking good, clear questions. <laughs> Give me a few minutes. Uh, I was born into a newspaper family. Mm. And from the moment I could read, I was proofreading columns and stuff for oh. the Inquirer and Mirror, which my parents at one point, my family owned, and then they sold to their best friend, and my dad continued to be an editor until he passed you away. You were a proofreader. I proofread. I did lots of stuff. And I have hearing loss because as an infant, they used to put me in the press room for the nap, you know, nap time. What's oh going on there? Gosh. So, we'll probably lull you to sleep, but probably definitely oh, not yeah. good for your ears. Not good for my ears, but the, the <laughs> it was very lulling, so. Anyway, hi everybody who's joining hi us Hi everybody, hi Tony, Mary, Michael, what's happening guys? Good to see Happy you. Happy Thursday. Mm. Uh, all right, so you're, you're in, but you're at the cable company. So you've, you're in media of some kind. Since, a, since, since birth. forever, yeah. Uh, but what, le what happened after the crush waned and you were in cable TV? Well, I what really, did you do next? I, w I became the, uh, what you would call the editor. I was, used to switch everything. I was the switcher, so program. The switcher. Yeah, I did switching. Nice. Which is like ready camera two and take oh, camera nice. two. So I the last was, time I was on camera, we didn't have a director. But that's for an adult. Yeah, that's show. you should have had a director. <laughs> probably, probably should have and I a fluffer. <laughs> I needed a fluffer for sure on for that video. Okay, so then I moved to West Virginia. I uh, went to college in West Virginia, and I was the first uh, freshman that they ever put on the radio. Hey, Joe Lopez. Do you know Joe? No. Joe Lopez. <laughs> 
<laughs> Joe Lopez. I know everybody. I tell, know nobody. Tell Joe what your... Oh, hey, Elizabeth Mary and Mary Elizabeth. Hi. We're saying hi, to hi Elizabeth Mary. Joe Lopez, you got to tell her what you're doing. What, why we should know Joe Lopez. Joe Lopez. You'll know him in a minute. Okay. All right, so you moved to West... Year. Why West Virginia? Because that was one of the few colleges at the time that actually had a radio and television communications multimedia program. In West Virginia, I would have not... Been, of all places. Would have not guessed that. Okay, now I had applied to Ithaca, which is where the crush went. Oh, the crush went to Ithaca. <laughs> you even went as far as to apply to... College. Not intentionally, but I followed that, that route because he was going into the same thing that at that point I had to become immersed in interest. In. Understood. Okay. Yeah, it's right. kind of an after effect, kind of a, it just was what it was. It was so, residual, but it was, I, I, yeah. <laughs> so you went south instead to West Virginia. I went to West Virginia to a college there. And again, television, radio, multimedia. At the time, it was still journalism and communications always. So I still had 18 journalism classes and I can write my ass off. Nice. And I've written for a lot of the local stuff here in, in the past few years. But anyway, went there, went to West Virginia. Uh, for three years, and then I was supposed to be getting an internship program, and they said, you know what, you are only 17 years old, and a junior in college. <gasps> did I mention I no. graduated from high school when I was 15? How did you manage that? I'm obnoxious and smart. <laughs> I have ADHD. I used to be medicated. I was just beginning to experiment with drinking. Yes, Joe Lopez, Orange County Sheriff, that's what he's running for. Hey, buddy. He's I know who you are. <laughs> Good luck with that. Fifteen. Yes. Fifteen. Yeah. So. All right. So you're in. A, you're. You're. You're a junior at seventeen, and so did they just say no? You're too young. They said you're too immature. Wow. To represent the college in an internship program, and then I didn't have any classes that were left to take. That's how it always happens. Most anyone you talk to be like, yeah, I, it was like a junior year, and I had to wait another year or so before the classes came back around again that right. I needed. So I did the mature thing and I quit. <laughs> you quit college. <laughs> and I went to Pennsylvania, no? to Pittsburgh. Oh, why Pittsburgh? Uh, well, that's the time I went with a girl. Oh, so you followed a lady. Yeah. Okay, so crushes, a crush led you to the next place. So you're, I can see this pattern here. So it's you're, bad. You're, <laughs> it's a horrible pattern. <laughs> no, I think that happens a lot, believe it or not. It really does. And then yeah. it sh the trajectory changes mm -hmm. and the person changes, but your maybe your work and your friends and what you're trying to accomplish Indeed. get yeah. going. So what did you do in Pennsylvania? Uh, well, for a while I, I kicked around and... <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I immediately started working at uh, one of the top 40 radio stations, B94, in Pittsburgh. And I became the promotions manager at some point, but they never let me on air. <laughs> I don't know why. They were like, no, because not like, you. because you were too young? I don't know. They just maybe wasn't the right fit. Everyone's like, you belong on a rock radio station. Uh, and this was top 40. Gotcha. And I have the energy. Clearly, I have the energy, Ted. Ted, <laughs> clearly. I mean, you can't make it up right here. Right, right here on the screen. So, I love it. Yeah, but, um, you know, they would have me do things like uh, answer the phones in, in the office. Not the, you know, the radio request lines. But the literal, hey, you think you were calling easy communications. And people would hang up thinking that they had called the wrong number or that, uh, that I was, you know... Uh, how could people, how could they not have the forethought based on your voice that you wouldn't have a voice for radio? <laughs> well, I, I don't have a face for print. No, so <laughs> I, I always say I have a face for radio, but I've proven that totally right doing this Facebook okay. show. Uh, but how did, your voice <laughs> is obviously, it sounds like a radio voice. Was it always like that? Okay, so if you're answering the phone that way, how could they not know? What was the what was the holdback, the drawback? Just because your age, probably. All right. So how did you end up getting out of that? Because you were you obviously didn't stay answering the phones. It couldn't have been for that long. Well, at the same time as I was working at a major radio station, I was also working full time at teeny little stations, say in Uniontown, Pennsylvania, um, where you know small little things um, like going to Lake County and working at, you know, Mount Doors. Sure. Or maybe Castleberry. Did you do you know. promotion or were you on air? Oh, no, I was on air. Oh, That's so you were on air. Mm -hmm. So what was that like the first time that you got on air there after all of that, um, you answer the phones instead scenario? Did you love it? I was nervous as hell. Were you? Yeah, you still get nervous now. 
Yeah. I mean, I was taking the elevator up here, and I was like, oh, my God, this is going to be... That's so fascinating. I think it's good for people to hear that. So yeah. we're on... I mean, I don't get nervous on this because I'm directing it. Hi, Joe Boy. Joe Boy, what's happening? Uh, but I understand that. So mm -hmm. sometimes when I'm... Sp even when I'm speaking, and I get speaking engagements, and I'm up there, and I'm... I still, right beforehand, get the butterflies, and I think people think, "Oh, you're just gifted with it." I don't. I don't think so. It just takes practice. It's like everything else. No, yeah, you know. I mean, uh, it's a, this. But is I still get butterflies. Mm. I still get a little nervous. Good man. So good, good stuff. Okay, so I worked at several different smaller stations at the same time as I worked at big stations in and around Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. I worked at a small station in Weirton, West Virginia, for a really long time. At the same time as I worked in Pittsburgh at a, you know, a highly rated station in a smaller capacity. And I was still go. I went back to school. Oh, you did? I went back to college. You decided, all right, I'm not going to be that person anymore. I want to try to go back to college. Did you no, finish? Uh, no. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I have a feeling that was how that story was going to Well, no, no, wait. Now, see, the, when I said I kicked around in Pittsburgh, when I moved to Pittsburgh, uh, the girlfriend became abusive, so I split. Oh, All right. good thing. The same time, there were some deaths in my family. A little money came my way. So I decided I was going to go back to college part-time get an internship and get myself back into radio by going in Pittsburgh. That's so that's amazing. exactly how I did that. I mean, it wasn't like I just knocked on the door and said, hey, I'm here. <laughs> I went back to college and did it right after like a year and a half of being too immature. Yeah, but I think, that, I mean, <laughs> it had to have been a, um, you know, when you're when you're told that kind of stuff, it's kind of disheartening. So. Yeah, I, I, yeah, but like I said, I did the really immature thing. And Jennifer wants to know what part of Pittsburgh Oh, uh, well, I lived all around. I lived in Shadyside, Squirrel Hill, um, Mount Washington a lot because I worked in Mount Washington area. And let's see, Crafton also, I think. Yeah, something nice. like that. John says all his radio was here in Orlando need to travel more. Yeah, you gotta get out and travel. You really should. Her sister's in Pit, I don't know how to say it. Pitcarn. That. Pitcarn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, McKee's Rocks. I, I like, again, I was there for, it took me eight years to get out of Pittsburgh. Yeah, ba where did you go? Da -da -da -da. Boom. Where'd you go after that? Here. Oh, so you did come to Orlando yes. at some point. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, mean, I know you're 90s. here now, but. Early 90s. That's what your bio said, something about the early 90s. The early or maybe 90s. that was your one sentence to me. I was born in Nantucket and I've been in radio here since the early 90s. I'm like, I gotta find a longer bio for you. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's, it was fine. No, I almost printed no? it. <laughs> uh, so you, you came here and what happened? Oh, you have a common friend. Oh, my. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Good fine. old days at the Frog. Yeah, um, except that I didn't work at the Frog, I knew people from the Frog. How funny is that? Is the frog local or Pittsburgh? Uh, I don't know. Or, or <laughs> you'll have to tell us where. Here, I think. Probably here. All right, so you come to Orlando, and what do you, what when, when ends I up worked happening? at 96.5, uh, continue as rock and roll. Q96. There's the voice. You have the perfect <laughs> voice for that station. Yes, and that was my first rock station. Was it? Yes. And did you love it as much as you thought you would love it? Oh, my God. <laughs> it was great because it was the first time we were playing like um, Alice in Chains, you know, Man in the Box, and there were swear words and stuff, and it was like, Ooh, yeah. and I was like, oh, this is so much better than Madonna and Debbie Gibson. Oh yeah, yeah. So. I still have. A, I'm a pop. No, I know. Guy, it but I, I like rock too. I mean, come on. <laughs> she says Daytona. Is yeah, no, I tell was. you, it's a frog. I think my brother used to get a lot of stuff from you guys down there. So you, you come here, you work 96, and then I don't know the rest. Like, I, I printed the bio, but we oh. joke that we spend the $1.50 uh, that I have for R&D on booze. Oh, so we really just, it? uh, it's right here. Um, <laughs> Joe Boy, of course, says he loves Debbie Gibson. Me too. Of course you do. I, <laughs> Kiss. Uh, but you've done, like, so radio is your in your blood. It's not like, I mean, you've, you've dabbled in it, and you obviously have other things that you do, but yeah. it's still something. And how is the radio world? My, my impression, and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong, my impression is that it's a lot of jumping around, there's not a ton of stability necessarily, and then the whole environment, the entire world of radio, has changed very significantly. So give All me right, some well, ideas. That's a lot to work with. Okay, there you go. Radio has changed a lot, okay, since the FM dial came up, AM radio back in the back in the 60s and whatever. 70s, of course, you got your FM radio, album-oriented rock, and the DJs just started getting money, 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 and it went really well into the 80s and the years of the yuppie. 
Um, there was like morning shows, we were getting paid millions of dollars. It was awesome. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, stupid ass computers came around. I hate yeah. you, computers! They changed the whole thing. It really did change the entire focus of radio. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, these satellite stations start popping up, and now you could just bounce one radio station uh, to the. To the point where it's like a spider and there's just one little place and five different outlets that are all running the exact same programming. And then it's uh, pre-recorded. There's hardly anything that's actually live anymore. Why is that? Is that because of cost? Is it just because of the demand, all of the above? Uh, because I love, I love live radio. I love live. That's why I love Facebook Live. Because you yep. get the immediate yep. people can ask questions. And then they can also ask questions later. But if you're not live and you're being recorded... Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I find recorded. I'm also OCD. I don't know if we talked about this a little bit earlier. I would, yeah. I would be horrible at editing a video well, or an audio. <laughs> and I know you do that, and I want you to talk about that. I will. Bit. But here's the thing. You're right. I, I it's one of the reasons I'm not doing music radio now is because I don't like what they call voice tracking. All right, and it's not just that it's the money because there's no money in it now. All right, you, they take a five-hour shift, and they've pretty much jumped it down to 45 minutes of, of production studio time, uh, where you're just opening the microphone and recording your little bits between, you know, here you go, here you go, here you go. Wow. Whereas in the studio, when you were live, you're there, you jam that song up, you're dancing, yep. the energy's hot, you know, and then it's time to talk, and you're like, boo, 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 <laughs> isn't that awesome? Yep, yep, yep. It's really hard to replicate that in the studio when you're hearing, if any, of the song at all. Right. All right. I would think that would be so difficult. Because when we're live here, I mean, I'd love to have music in the background, and maybe we'll get to that at some point. I'll be technologically advanced enough. But I feel like that, that immediate... Interaction with the audience, and mm -hmm. I mean, we're here, we're present, creates an an entirely different world, and it's much more responsive and real and um, in the moment. Oh, Jennifer! Jennifer has asked a very pertinent question. Oh. <laughs> no, there's no money in that satellite radio, serious radio, and all the shows that are on there. No, hardly anything. Um, the problem with radio is that, like I said, the bottom's falling out of it. Yeah. Most of the ads that you hear are, if the station gets compensated if somebody calls that phone number and actually orders whatever that product is. Oh, so it's tied to an actual order. They're all order. what they call LS, yeah, which is... I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. is that so when why you hear that... that phone number over and over and over and over again, that is uh... station-specific, sometimes show-specific on a station. That's how you get that. your credit. And then they get a teeny percentage of the sale. So they don't they don't make the money on the actual buying of the no, airtime. No, they give the airtime up in exchange wow. for the uh, for the idea that they may get a sale out of it. Wow! And then they'll get a percentage of that sale. I did not know that. See, I'm learning stuff. Should, see, you guys, you're being educated. And radio. Jennifer, yeah, she said she was offered a job a couple of years ago to go back to New York, but the pay was crap. That's the problem. Right. All right. Like I was saying, they voice track. Five hour shift takes you about a half hour, 45 minutes tops if you're doing a good job and your OCD will take you three hours. Yeah. Um, and they're paying 20 bucks. Oh my gosh. $20. And okay. how did, I have a question that just dawned on me. How did podcasts impact radio? Is it because I feel like people definitely like to listen to recorded stuff? <laughs> But is it is it different? I know it's a different world, but it's I It's not just... that. It's for the for years. For years, Ted. I felt the podcast, and I still have a little aversion to it. I felt podcast was a dirty word, <laughs> dirty word, okay? Because it was not. It's not live radio, right. which is why I love doing what we do on Facebook Live, yeah. two hours, you know, at night, late night. Live. We have to promo that later, by the way. Well, we will before the show gets over. You've got like thirteen minutes left. It just went. Oh, uh, look, she's she knows how to keep time in this this crazy environment. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, podcasts, I always thought were really, really bad. All right. But I've had to sort of, you know, like ugly stepsister embrace it. Right. Because you're right. People do uh, listen to podcasts. So I offer the Connection Show, which is what I'm doing right now. All right. I offer that on Facebook Live as a behind the scenes as well as the actual show. So, so when you're doing, the Connections is a radio show, yes, right? Yes. And while you're doing the radio show, you have a Facebook Live 
uh, going on at the same time. Yes, okay. with with everything, with credits, uh, with the banner, you know, That's with awesome. the ads and stuff across the bottom. And while we were in commercial break in Gainesville, Tampa, Bradenton, and Sarasota, all right, as well as on the internet, ConnectionShow.com and LivingSexyRadio.com. Miss Glenda Chauncey, right? Isn't she involved in that anymore or no? No. Oh, well, um, I didn't know. She's got her own stuff. And oh, she that's does? Fine. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything. It's all good. <laughs> I don't do R&D, I told you. All right. It's okay. But anyway, while that's going on, uh, while we're playing commercials on the radio, we put on an entirely different show for the Facebook Live people for the four or five minute oh, commercial cool. Oh, in between. That's mm -hmm. actually cool. So that we keep people not only staying on Facebook Live, but we actually give them... Come on, admit it. When uh, radio, if you were live on the radio and that four minute commercial comes on and you can walk away, go outside, smoke a cigarette, eat a donut, take a whiz, you're not in that studio. Okay, that's what normally happens right. during the live segments of a radio show. And nowadays it's like two hours in the morning is live and then the third hour of the morning show is pre recorded. So just thought you That's really good. No. So, okay, so you've got connections. Mm hmm. All right, let's talk about some of the other things that you do. Because Connections, and they can go to, what is the website for Connections? Connectionsshow.com. Okay, that's On Facebook, one. Connections FM. And we'll share all that later. It's all but, out there. Yeah. But I want you, so what, what about next? Because you've got a list of things that you do. And instead of me looking down at it, I'm just going to let you look down at it. You're going to tell me. Well, um, I have a lot of stuff going on. I know, you okay. really do. And I love, that's why I love, <laughs> that's also why I do the 30 Minutes Before because I think it's important for me to kind of get a clue, and I'm not right. really a great visual. I'm a I'm a not an auditory person, so I like to visualize stuff. He's so. using big words. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I don't know That's if you only, saw. It's only it's glazed right totally over. Like, well, I said it out loud. I'm not sure I knew what it meant. Yeah, but right, it sounded so, good. You pronounce it right. I did for now. Wait till three o'clock. All right, so go next. Three o'clock. No one told me I had to be here. I right. have. No, I, I have, have obligations. I have a show at three. What I do. Okay, Nunez Productions. Yeah, let's talk. I love this, so okay. tell them more about that. And the Uplive family that's watching, Hi guys. you guys are going to love this. Okay, Nunez Productions is awesome. Um, it's my wife's uh, business, Linda Nunez Music.com. Buy her stuff. She's cutting her stuff out. She's an awesome artist. But when music was like 10 years, I mean, I managed it for 10 years. We've been together 17. Yes, thank you very much. 17, and that's I haven't, awesome. she hasn't killed me yet. <laughs> Anywho, um, so the production studio was something we put together, we decided, uh, she wanted to record her own music, and so I built her a recording studio. And next thing you know, since she's Cuban, did I mention she's Cuban? I figured it was something, but Cuban, yeah. Holy Cuban. Anywho, so what we do now is we uh, work for a company called Fight Sports TV, and I transcribe all the announcers for, say, sumo wrestling, uh, South African MMA contests, karate, form, weapons, and all that. So when you say transcribe, what does that mean? Verbatim, word for word, the announcers come on like, Larry, My I'm Larry Michaels, and welcome to the sumo wrestling, <laughs> where are you biggest athletes in the world, and the biggest competition. So you're typing And I write out. everything that they say, okay, and then our guy Jose, Jose Gonzalez, He's, uh, he translates it into Spanish. He comes in, voices a lot of the male announcer stuff. You know, Gore! And sumo wrestling in Spanish is pretty funny, too. And then Linda does any of the female stuff. Okay. So she she does a lot of the promos and a lot. Of, now the MMA over in Africa is a lot of females are getting into it. And so she, she does their voiceovers, you know. Where, and we dub it in Spanish, send it back out, and it plays all over the world. So you're taking you're taking it and making it so that it can play in other countries, other languages, mm -hmm. Spanish. In the language of Spanish, That's yes. awesome. Yes, That's it's awesome. part of what the company does is that, yes. Um, and then also we teach voiceovers. So I love the concept of this. And um, so who do, do you do the voiceovers yourself? I don't do jack crap, okay? <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm not a, I'm, I mean, I'm a good teacher about some things, but Linda's, Linda's the one, she's actually got an education degree. Uh, I don't have a degree, I think we got that. But I do have eight years of college. <laughs> you should be a doctor. <laughs> We're gonna start calling you doctor. Oh no, 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 no. Dr. Fox. No. All right, so I, she, te she, she, so does she the teaches voiceovers. voiceovers and she teaches sing, uh, singing too. Like we've wow. had, we got a gal now, uh, Ashley De La Rosa, who is starring on Broadway in Mean Girls. Oh, very cool. She went through, yeah, she was on The Voice, and we have an, a, a lot of up-and-comers. She only takes people 
who, you know, she's really, really, really good talent. Yeah. yeah, but, you know, God bless, but she doesn't want to, you know, waste her time or somebody else's time. But she certainly would. Does she ever have any American Step Idol things you. where... Uh, you know, they come in and everybody's told them how beautiful they sing for their whole yes, life. Yes, that's yes, That's the part, that's yes. my favorite part of American Idol. I don't want anybody to feel bad, but sometimes that is just amazing that you mm -hmm. actually believe for the last 20 plus years that you could sing. Well, it's because people are like blowing smoke up your yeah. butt and then you get into a real situation. And so anyway, that's what Linda does. I do that along with awesome. her. I heard um, some of her music earlier. She's awesome. Yeah, check her out, lindanunezmusic.com. And she also does all of the elements and branding, uh, as well as a, a ton of our production for Connection Show. Very cool. Because if she didn't, you're like, <laughs> what are you not supporting me? I don't me? know. I don't know. But that's part of what we do. Now, um, I do want to mention Stages of Life Medical nice Center. Perhaps you're familiar with Dr. David Klein? I don't think I am. Well, he has a show on 96.5, Sunday afternoons at 3. Ask the doctor, man. He, um... What Kevin, station? I'm sorry. 96.5. Nice. Okay. I wanted to make sure I heard it. You did. Uh, Chris Hill says, hello, fellow broadcaster. Do you know Chris? Hi there. Yeah. Uh, sort of. Yeah. I know a lot of people. Anyway, Stages of Life Medical Center. I love them. They did this work on my face. It's called Forma. And it made my wrinkles go. Oh, away. so it's uh, not plastic surgery, for lack of a better word. But no. Like a, um, no, not that kind medical, of Medical. It's know, Stages of Life. Stages of Life. So they suck the fat out of you? No, I need that. no, oh, they man. use the heat and um, oh, and and pulses. And, but no, not just that. They do all that stuff. He's got like all these machines that can figure out what's wrong with you in a minute and take really good care of you. Nice. Suffernomore.com. And then is that the name of his website? Suffernomore.com. And where is he located? Right off of uh, I four and Longwood, four thirty four. Okay. Can't miss it. Good Dr. David Klein. We like David Klein. Tell him I said hi. Have David, come on. Would he ever do anything live? I'd love to do have him do like something live. He something. could. He could. I don't know David, we'll talk practice. about it. We, we love you. Good friend. Okay. And then I've got this thing I'm doing tomorrow. Uh, Sawmill Center. We're doing some arts in Maitland. Ten artists, eight female, all right? It's a free thing, six o'clock, 7-Eleven North Orlando Avenue, the Samuel Center of Uptown. And so what is that about? So you are bringing in local artists, or are they from all over? Mm -hmm. and established then... Florida artists. Okay, established um, Florida. And what's the purpose, just to get them exposure right, for right. their art? This is a beautiful building, and uh, Suzanne Sabatino is the one that she owns, and what she's doing is She's a lover of art. She doesn't want to be called a curator or a gallerist or whatever these made up words are. <laughs> she just really, really supports artists. And so she's, uh, within the building, she's got all this art from different artists that's going to be featured. The artists will be there, be like a reception, some free, just kind of something eclectic to get you uh, to check out Uptown Maitland or Upper Maitland. I so we're going to, when we, and we're, we're going to ask, we're going to post everything. I'm going to read this. We're gonna post the uh, the website and how to reach out on connections, on Nunez, <laughs> on points. Stage Life, and on Sawmill when um, we share the show. Melissa will post everything and then I'll share it with you guys. All right. By the way, don't forget tonight, nine o'clock on the iHeartRadio app, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I've got a great show for you. It's called Connection Show. Just tune in News Radio 102.5 or 540 a.m. if you're here in Central Florida. All right, it's a good show. See, listen, yeah. support, listen to support, Melissa. Support, support, support local. Support By the way, local. we're always looking for sponsors. There you go. Just she got like it Ted. in, just like me. Seriously, I have a booze habit. You guys need to help me keep. I'm kidding. Oh, why don't you tell me? I do tastings. Oh, there you go. <laughs> got a whole bunch okay. of booze. I like that. We'll do that next time. All right. Any parting words of wisdom for them? Anything you want to share with them? I mean, I think we covered a lot in 25, 30 minutes. Yeah, we probably did. I hope we didn't overwhelm you. No, well, we're going to share it all again when we share all the contact information. Mm -hmm. People will remember. But it's, it was fantastic. It was great information. Um, anything you want to share with them? Any? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I always have these particular parting words that I, I like to throw out there. And that's uh, thanks for listening. Love you. Mean it. <laughs> so, yeah. That's it. That's, Love that's you, mean it. Mean. And then I'm going to call you out on something, mm. which you're going to laugh about because you told me I could. Okay. Um, in the beginning of every show, before we start, I ask uh, the person I'm with, are you a table talker? So I did thump a couple times, right? Oh my God, the entire time. So uh, table talker means you hit the table all the time and it shakes. And so if you've got your elbows here. I wasn't uh, shaking so much. Yeah, 
Okay, we're gonna go with that. But was it? You are 100% a table talker. I just so you know for the future. Well, and I only called you out on it because you told me you know, I would you tell know somebody. Why? You know why this happens though? <laughs> because normally while I'm doing my stuff, I am multitasking. Yeah, right. I get it. I am running a board. I am running two compute, three, excuse me, three computers. You've got your hands full there. You don't have your hands full right I now. am running the show, <laughs> and I'm also trying to keep everybody entertained and push the buttons and different camera angles yeah. on the computer. Yeah, that's a lot. I can so, barely hit the finish button when we're over. Me sitting here and tapping the table is probably just because I don't have anything else to do with right? my hands. And they could just be around your neck. They could. I'm sure that stand in line. I'm sure there's a ton of people. Ted Boger, everybody. All right. Everybody. We love you guys. Thank you so much, Melissa, for being on. You were awesome. Uh, so we'll post all the information. Please reach out to her. She's got a lot of great stuff going on. She does a lot in the community. Um, and listen to her radio program, please. please. All right. So since she likes to do things, I'm going to say, I love you. And then if you'll gently hit the finish button. Oh, look at please. me. Please. Later. Bye, guys.